Hi, I'm Dom from the SEMPRA Group, and today we're going to be looking at the InSpec Vision Planar. It's a 2D field of view scanning system, and essentially it takes a picture of a part against a very bright background, uses the shadow of the part to create the measurement data. So I'll show you this in action. First, I open the demo part file, and this is pre-made with the CAD with all the measurement data that we're looking for. So I'll also inspect the part now and take a picture of the part. You see the bed lights up, it takes the shadow of the part and uses that to create the 2D measurements we're interested in. Once it's done that, it can compare it straight with the CAD, get all the measurements that we want, and also make a deviation map, which I'll show you in a bit. So it's just snapped them together and got all the measurements. You can see that it's got two failed and all the rest have passed. And I can just interrogate that inspection report. And we can go through all the dimensions as we like there. And maybe turn off all the past features, look at the fails and look at why that's happened. So gaining a bit of confidence in our process and making sure we understand what's passed and failed there. Okay, now we can look at the deviation map of the part, which is automatically created and projected back onto the part. So here's the deviation map. You can see all of the issues with the part are highlighted in red. Uh, so any flaws on the profile of the part um, are highlighted here. And it's also projected back onto the part using the surf scan, which is an add-on for the system. This helps identify failures much quicker by projecting them in real time back onto the part. We can also see things like maybe this little notch taken out the side. Um, these are rounded, but they're drawn on the CAD as square. So you can see that they're brought up as red as well. And these corners, this connector here, and this corner here is just slightly too chamfered. So you can see all of those issues straight away and it's color coded to show you pass and fail immediately. Now I'm gonna show you how to simply add dimensions to a CAD file that you've already imported. This could be a DXF or DWG file that you download from maybe a CAD of your own or any customer CAD that you've got. So I've got the CAD for this file and I'm gonna load that up and I'm just gonna load this onto the bed. Now, I open this part, and you can see it's nice and simple. It's just a square with four holes in it. I'm gonna make a new inspection report, and then I'm gonna add a width. a height, and a diameter. I could also do a pitch between holes. So that's nice and simple, it's all added there. We've got a general tolerance, and we can choose a tolerance table if we like. ISO 2768 is a standard for this, but I'll leave it as default for now. And now, I can simply auto-inspect again. First, I'm just gonna save. And there I've chosen settings like the thickness of the part and the color of the part. That improves the accuracy. And there you have it. It's measured all of those features. It's got the width the height, the pitch between holes, and that diameter I chose. And I can see that it's just under on the width, and that's why it's red. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look into the G, D, and T, so that's geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, and look at how to apply those to a part. So I've got the same part here, but I want to know the true position of the holes. So I manual add, and then on the right hand side we've got G, D, and T here. So I can click on position of this hole. 
and I've got a 0.25 true position tolerance of that hole there. Um, same again, I can do maybe a straightness of the edge. And measure it there. And you can see when it measures, it'll apply those tolerances as well. Okay, so it's not the most straight edge or the most well positioned hole, but we've got the answers there that we're looking for. Okay, now we're going to look at the multiple part feature of the planar. So we can make use of more of the beds by putting on more of the same part at once. So here I've got three of the same part. I'm just going to load them onto the bed. You can see I can load them at any angle. It doesn't affect the measurement. And then I can auto inspect. It's doing exactly the same as it did before, but this time it's multiplying that three times and it's going to project those deviations back onto each of the parts. So it's got the results. And you can see the projection back onto the parts, each of the holes. So you can see they're not entirely round, and some of the parts are a bit smaller than anticipated. Uh, we can tell that using the inspection report feature as well. So we can see where the width and the height may be not in spec, but the holes look good enough to me. Okay, now we're going to be looking at the reverse engineering of a part. So here I've got a part with some through holes in it and a profile that I don't know the shape of. So I'm going to put it onto the planar. I'm going to quickly take a scan. And I've already told it how thick the plate is. And once I've got that scan, I can reverse engineer. So I can go into my reverse engineering, set a datum. For this, I can just use two of the holes. And that aligns the part in X and Y. And then what I can do is I can fit polylines and arcs so it will fit roughly the outside contour of the part, and then fit all the circles to the inside of the part. And then I can export that as a CAD file. So this is a DXF or DWG file. We can choose either one. Um, so I'll just save that as a DWG. And once that's saved, I can then maybe interrogate it further. So if I load it up as a CAD file, then I can take direct measurements from that as well using the report. So let's measure maybe the diameter of those holes. You can see they're not nominals. We can change those once we come to measure it. And maybe we want an overall length too. So something like that can be done very quickly. And then we can measure the part too. Um, so this is a way of getting really quickly all of the nominals and all of the measurements that you want of any 2D part. Okay, now I'm going to show you how reporting works and how to export to SPC. So, I'm just going to measure the part. Okay, and in the settings for our auto inspect, we've got what to automatically generate every time. So, we can automatically print a report, automatically print a deviation map, output SPC. Um, we can also print a diagram too. So what I'm going to do is show you what that does when it's not automatic, but that can all be done in one button press. So output at the top here, we've got print report, 
and then you can see that we can choose where to send that in our file management there. So I might call this part one. Just open that and show you the report for part one. So we've got nominals, measure, deviation, and the tolerance there and the pass or fail. So it's nice and simple, automatic generation of a PDF report. Uh, as well as the PDF report though, um, some softwares need to pick up a CSV file. So we've got an SPC report here. So part one there. Again, it's simply an, a CSV file. So we can show that in Notepad and it's just the raw data that your SPC software can pick up automatically and then immediately report on. It's extremely powerful for process control uh, to have that automatically generated after every part you measure. Also, if you have multiple parts on the bed, then it will number them as their individual part names as well. Okay, now we're gonna look at how to use the SPC output and look at that in ProLink. So first, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna measure the parts using the auto inspect button. And just to show you, I've got output SPC automatically set up for every time I measure the parts. So it's taking measurements of all three parts. And this can be done on one or multiple parts. And you can see there it's taken the data. It sent the data as an SPC file, and you can see it's updated these records here. So you can see record 10 is the latest one. If I just minimize that and run it again. I'll just have that up on the screen. And as soon as it's measured them, it'll export that data. There we go. So you can see updating as it goes along. It's taking those measurements nice and repeatable. And it's got them numbered there. So very simple, you've got the SPC output and you can make a report there using ProLink.